Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter where you are at, thank you for clicking on this video today. My name is Matthew Vonnegut. This is a brand new video series called the Construct Hub Highlights. In this series, I'm gonna go find a Construct module on the Construct Hub. I'm gonna talk to you about it, tell you what it does, and show you how to use it. This first video is gonna be covering a construct called the CDK Intrinsic Validator. It is a construct built by Josh Kellendonk. Its job is to help you test your infrastructure as code by running intrinsic validations against that during every deployment. In the CDK book, we talked about this a little bit in the testing chapter when it came to sort of the, the last stage of testing within an application. You start with unit testing, maybe do some integration testing, and then finally you do end-to-end -end testing. And this helps you do that end-to-end -end testing. So coming here and looking at the CDK Construct Hub page for this construct, I can see good documentation that guides me through everything that it can do. Uh, there's good usage examples through this entire thing. Uh, it covers things like how to run Fargate tasks to test a system, monitoring CloudWatch alarms, running step functions, running Lambda functions, and even running Puppeteer. Uh, I'm going to show you during this thing how to use the step function state machine for doing testing. Uh, I'm a big fan of step functions. They're very powerful and they're very flexible. So it's gonna really help me test out some architecture here. But even if I wasn't gonna use step functions, there are still some very easy validations built in for things like checking a URL or monitoring a cloud watch alarm. For example, you could monitor alarm to watch for 500s occurring within your load balancer. And if that starts to get abnormally high, then maybe you automatically go ahead and roll back your code. One thing to keep in mind about these is that these tests are always run as part of the stack deployment. So if the stack fails and these tests fail, everything is automatically rolled back, leaving you in a good state. All right, so the example infrastructure that I'm gonna use here and test against is a very simple media convert upload process. So the idea is that we start off and a file gets put into an S3 bucket, a MP4 file or a .mov file. And that is going to trigger a Lambda to execute via a event bridge rule on that bucket. The Lambda functions job is going to start a media convert job over in the media convert service. And when that's done, the job says to write the file back into the bucket in a converted prefix. So drop a file into a bucket, Lambda media convert back into the bucket. So very simple architecture for just converting and transcoding media files. I'm gonna take a real black box style approach to testing this. I'm not gonna be really testing specifically for the Lambda function to fire or the media convert job. All I'm gonna really test is if I put an object into the uploads prefix, do I see an object get put it into the converted prefix within 60 seconds? How it gets there, I don't really care. All right, so this is the step function that I put together to do this test. It's pretty straightforward. I won't dig into it too much in here because this, the details of this aren't too important. But what I'm going to do is start off by copying an object into the bucket into a specific uploads prefix. And I'm going to use a special test.mp4 file that I'm going to deploy out to the bucket in a special prefix called test. I'll just keep it there. It'll be useful for testing going forward. When this step function executes, it'll go ahead and take that file, move it into the uploads prefix. The next step is it's going to go ahead and try to read the object attributes. Now I could try to actually read the object itself, but I don't actually care about reading the object in the step function. I don't necessarily care about the contents of the file like the get object call would give me. I just care about the attributes. So I'm just gonna read the attributes off of it. Next thing is I'm going to see, did that call actually work? If the object exists, then the call's going to execute just fine and I can move to my cleanup phase. But if the object didn't exist because it hasn't been transcoded properly or it just hasn't been transcoded yet, then I'm gonna go ahead and hop down into a wait state. And I'm gonna wait about 30 seconds and I'm gonna try that get object call again. Hopefully now the second time, it'll probably execute just fine. And then I'll go into my delete cleanup phase where I just go in and I clean up the file that I put into the uploads prefix and I clean out the file that 
was dropped into the converted prefix. Finally, I'm putting about a 60 second timeout on this step function because it's a relatively small test file. It should convert just fine within 60 seconds. And this way I can make sure that if my test fails, it fails quickly. If it doesn't convert within 60 seconds, then something's definitely wrong. All right, so let's get to the code. I'm gonna start off with just a very simple stack here. At the very beginning, I create a media bucket. This is going to hold all of my media. Then I create the transcoding function. That's this step here, and this I've wrapped into a nice little construct that encapsulates not only the function, but any additional information that may need to go with that, like the job definition that will be used with media convert. And then finally, I go ahead and create the construct that will do this test and end up calling this construct from the hub, the intrinsic validator. So let's dive into this. So the first part of this test is really just setting it up so that I can have a test file to test with. The step function needs something to copy into the bucket, so I'm going to just use the standard S3 bucket deployment construct to move a zipped up MP4 file into that bucket into a special test prefix. These next few steps are just use it setting up some commonly used file names and object keys. Then I go ahead and I set up my step function. This is going to not only represent what I just showed you a moment ago as far as the actual test, but then I also go ahead and grant its permissions. Now notice I'm really granting it fine grained permissions. I'm only granting it access to read and write the files that it cares about so I don't accidentally leak permissions and run into an issue sometime time later. And then I get to use the construct. And this is really brilliant because it is super simple. All I have to say is create a new intrinsic validator and I just hand it that state machine. Now, at this point, when I go ahead and deploy out the stack into a environment, it's going to execute that step function. And if that step function completes within its 60 second timeout, then the stack is good to go and everything I know is working properly. But if there is a failure for any reason, then all the stack will roll back. So let's go ahead and deploy this once with everything in theory working. Gonna just do my simple CDK deploy. Wait a few seconds. All right, and that's it. My stack went ahead and deployed into the environment. It ran that state machine. I can actually go see it. All right, so the stack deployed. I can go into the step functions console and actually see its execution. I can see that it ran through, copied all the files and did everything it was supposed to do. Now let's go ahead and actually make this fail on purpose so we can see the failure occur. Now I'm going to purposely break my code at this point. I'm going to go into the Lambda function handler and I'm just going to make it exit without doing anything meaningful here. Go ahead and do another deployment. Now one thing to note is that I can't be doing a hot swap deployment because hot swap deployments with Lambda functions bypass all the CloudFormation functionality. If I was to do a hot swap deployment here, it wouldn't retest the stack. This does need to go through a full deployment process here. All right, so we can see now during the deployment, it's going out there, it's copied the file out. It's now trying to read that converted file, trying to get the object attributes off of it, and it's not finding it. It's going through the failure choice. It's waiting for 30 seconds. It's gonna to try to read that object again. And because it's never going to exist, it's eventually going to fail out after the 60 second timeout on the step function. And once that timeout occurs, the whole stack is gonna go ahead and roll back and I'm no longer going to have that bad Lambda function deployed out in the environment. It's gonna to revert to the previous version, which is a known good state. All right, and that's it. So I've got this really nice, simple way of being able to verify now that the code that I've written, the infrastructure and the application I've built for transcoding this file is actually working properly. And I can know that every single time I do a deployment, it is working and I don't have to go back and manually retest anything. All right, so hopping back over into Constructs Hub and the documentation for this, let's go ahead and review some of the other things we could have done. Uh, there's abilities and support right now for executing a Fargate task in your system. So if you're running an ECS environment and you want to execute some sort of task that runs in that environment and does some sort of validation, whether it be making API calls, database calls, whatever it may be, you've got that option very easily to incorporate that in. Again, we can monitor for CloudWatch alarms. So if you already have monitoring in your system for bad states or things, you can simply say, watch that. And if things go bad after a deployment, 
go ahead and roll everything back. The step functions we covered, there's also the ability to execute a lambda function, and if the lambda function execution fails, then it goes ahead and rolls back. And then finally, again, you can do puppeteers. Uh, I recommend if there are other types of tasks that you want to be able to execute as part of your intrinsic validations, go ahead and open up an issue against uh, his GitHub page and request that. I am sure he'd be glad to add it in. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these, please go ahead and subscribe. If you have any comments about how I can make these videos better, I am always open to those suggestions. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Bonig. You can also find me on our cdk.dev Slack server where I try to help anybody I can with CDK issues. You can reach out to me there or you can just leave it in the comments below. Uh, thank you and have a great day.